One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen, fourteen. Hi, I'm Sierra. Hi, Hi I'm Jessa. Hi, I'm Adriana. Keep watching Channel 19. Through the streets of Soho in the rain. He was looking for the place called Lee Ho Fox. Gonna get a big dish of beef chow mein. Kitchen door. You better not let him in. Little old lady got mutilated late last night. Werewolves of London again. Gent who ran a muck in Kent. Lately he's been overheard in Mayfair. You better stay away from him. He'll rip your lungs out, Jim. I'd like to meet his tailor.
Cinderella's stepmother had a surprise for her. I have emptied the pot of lentils into the ashes for you. If you will pick them out again in two hours' time, you shall go to the ball with us. <laughs> and perhaps a sticky bun. But 
the witch refused to tell him any more of his sister, not even that her name was Rapunzel. She went on. I thought I was more than reasonable, and that we all might live happily ever after. But how was I to know? might lift the spell. Do you wish to have the curse reversed? I'll need a certain potion first. Go to the wood and bring me back one, a cow as white as milk, two, the cape as red as blood, three, the hair as yellow as corn, four, the slipper as pure as gold. Bring me these before the time of midnight.
get the things that makes it worth the journey into the woods. To sell the cow, to say, to sell, to get, to bring, to make, to live, to go to the festival in the woods. Cinderella had planted a branch at the grave of her mother, and she visited there so often and wept so much that her tears watered it until it had become a handsome tree. It's everywhere, Milky White. It's not to my liking. Hello, Jack! How do you know my name? When first I appear, it's mysterious. But once explained, I'm nothing serious. Say that again? On your way to the market? Could have been there a long time ago. Taking your time, I see? No, sir. Is that the truth? Well, you see, I'm resting. How much are you for that time? No, I'll send five pounds. Five pounds, Jack! Why such a sum? Mother told your me. mother? A boy your age, why? And you'd be lucky enough to exchange her for a sack of beans. Well, I... Come along, Milky White. There are spears here. Oh, yeah. 
continued his search for the cape as red as blood. As for Rapunzel, the witch was careful not to lose this beauty to the outside world, and so shot her deep within a doorless tower that lay deep within the forest. And 
when the old enchantress paid a visit, she called for. Things are only what you need them for. What's important is who needs them more. And so the baker, with newfound determination, continued his search for the cake that spread his blood. As for the little girl, she was surprised to find her grandmother's cottage door standing open. Yeah. 
There are giants in the sky. There are big, tall, terrible giants in the sky. Just 
go about our lives. No more hunting through the woods for strange objects. No more witches or dick-witted boys or hungry little girls. Please go. Yeah. 
just came to see that your wish is proud. You've caused me enough trouble in the past. Keep out of my path. <laughs>
and the owners, and my hen. Look what this hen has laid in my hand. A golden egg? I've never seen a golden egg before. You see, I promised you more than the five gold pieces I gave you, sir. Five gold pieces. Now I'm taking my cow. Five gold, oh, oh. five gold pieces. I never said I would sell, but you took the five gold pieces. You took five gold pieces? I didn't take you, game. Where are the five gold pieces? An old man was- You said I could have my cow. I never said you could, I said you might. You would take money before a child. Milky White's dead. Two midnights gone, and the exhausted baker and his wife buried the dead milky white. You must go to the village in search of another cow. And what exactly do you propose I use to purchase this cow? Here, call them its magic. A bean? No one with a brain larger than this is going to exchange a perfectly good cow for a bean. And steal it. Steal it? Steal it. Just two days ago, you were accusing me of exercising deceit in securing the cow. Then don't steal it and resign yourself to a childless life. I feel it best that you go for the cow, as I have met a maiden these previous eves with the slipper, and I might get it from her. Fine. Fine. That's simply fine. Unfortunately for Rapunzel, ah! the witch discovered her affections for the prince before he could spread her away. What did I clearly say? Children should listen. What were you not to do? Children must see. Leave me alone. I haven't been alone long enough. Your questions 
make no sense, old man. Go away! In need of another town? Does it make sense that you're running from a prince? Stop! Uh, 
Here, take my shoes. You'll run faster. Who was that mean? I do not know, sir. Why will cost you your life? I have done nothing. I'm the cow! <laughs> I'm the slipper! We want four! I will take this and give it to the prince. And tomorrow, we will search for the maiden who fits his shoe. I will have that slipper if it cost me my life. Give it to me now. Get it down the slipper! And, and, all the... Whoa, 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 not those! Uh, sir, just a bolt of lightning in a far-off kingdom. How dare you go off and search without me? My apologies, sir. I thought that I might... Enough of what you thought. I employed a ruse and had the staircase smeared with pitch. And then, when she ran down, remained this, the maiden slipper. That's brilliant. I thought so. But it did create quite a mess when the other guests left. And, sir, I have succeeded in securing the other slipper. Get down the slipper, and all will come to a happy end. Who are you, old man? When first I appeared, I seemed deleterious. But was Shut up! Do as he says. He's obviously we need a new spirit of some sort. We only need one. Yes. Ah! Ah! Oh my god! There's a dead giant in my backyard! I heard Jack coming down the beach so calling for his axe. And when he reached the bottom, he took the axe and began to hack on the stock. And with a crash, the stock fell. But there was no Jack. For all I know, he's been crushed by the ogre. Worrying will do you no good. If he's safe, then he's safe. If he's been crushed, well then, there's nothing we can do about that now, is there? Come, we must be off. I need my beauty rest before tomorrow's search is to commence. Doesn't anybody care? A giant has fallen from the sky! The third midnight is near. You all the items? Yes. That cow doesn't look white as milk to me. Oh,
there will be no reunion with his father, and he and his wife, bewildered, return home. The witch, who had been punished with age and ugliness that night her beams had been stolen and the lightning flashed, was now returned to her former state of youth and beauty. As for Milky White, after a night of severe indigestion, she was reunited with the now wealthy Jack. As for the witch, search for the foot to fit the golden slipper. When he came to Cinderella's house, Cinderella's stepmother took the slipper to Florinda. Cinderella presented herself and tried on the blood-soaked slipper. It fit like a glove. This is the true bride! Oh, I've always wanted a son! And much to the dismay of Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters, he took Cinderella off. When the wedding with the prince was celebrated, 
all right? I think so. And the baby? He's fine. You! I didn't come to our house. All we were thinking of is ourselves. Just look at my garden. What's up, your garden? Look! I straw it. trust that family to snuff out a rat. Or the giant? We'll all have to go to battle. Giant's smart. Giant's got a brain. Hard to outwit a giant. A giant just like us, only bigger. Much, much bigger. So big! That we are just a little expendable bug beneath its shoe. proceeded to the castle, but not before first visiting Jack and his mother. Look, Milky Boy, it's the butcher. The baker. The baker. What can we do for you, sir? I've come to investigate the destruction that was wrought upon our house today. My son has been home with me all day. Well, I guess Granny will have to do with that. 
take you. I don't need anyone to take me. I've gone many times before. Not when there have been such winds blowing about. That's right. We will take you, Freddie. No. I am not about to stick with a baby when a wind might return to this house, too. I know Mother made me promise, but I'm going to find the giant anyway. In the woods, it's always when you think last you're through, and then in the woods you go again to take another turn. Giant. You? Investigating news of a giant? Father would not even do that. That's business for your steward, or less. Well, what are you doing here in the woods? My Rapunzel has run off. Run off? She's a changed woman. She's been subject to hysterical fits of crying, moods that no soul could predict. I know not what to do. What a pity. And Cinderella? She remains well. Does she? Now, brother, do tell what you're really doing here. High in a tower like yours was, but higher, a beauty asleep. All round the tower, thicket of briar, a hundred feet deep. To my, my world. 
Are you certain this is the right direction? We went down the dell. Maybe we just go home. No, the path is straight. It was straight. Now there is no path. Where's the stream? Where's the light bulb? Where's Granny? It'll just turn around. No! We'll just have to find this house without the path. But Mother warned me never to stray from the path. The path has strayed from you. The steward of the royal family. What are you doing in the woods? The castle has been set upon by a giant. I warned you! Why didn't you do something? I don't make the posse, I just carry it out. And I warned you never to put your trust in a royal family to solve all your problems. Maybe we should all just turn back and go home. I wouldn't be in such a rush to do that if I were you. Guess which path the giant took back to the castle. What? All that is left of my garden is a sack of beans. And there's not much left of your house either. But I thought giants never strike the same house twice. You thought wrong. Wait.
Yes. And what are you doing in the woods alone? Um, it's a long story. Your husband, he would let you roam alone in the woods? I chose to roam alone. I'm looking for a lad. Your choice? How brave. Brave? Yes. <laughs> Anything can happen in the woods. May I kiss you? Yes, I do. And I have a baker? Ah, uh, yes, of course you're right. How foolish. I... Foolishness can happen in the woods. Once again, please, let your hesitations be hushed. Any moment, big or small, is a moment. After all, see the moment sky may fall. Any moment. But we can do this. Right and wrong don't matter in the woods. Only feel, let us meet the moment of your time. Life is often so unpleasant. You must know that as a present, this can take the moment present as a present for the moment. Jack! Jack! 81, 82. is off seducing some young maiden. What? I've heard that's what princes do. <laughs> Not all princes. You look just like the princess, except you're dirty. You are the princess. No, please, get up. Get up! I'm not a princess here. What are you to do? I must be on my way back to the castle. Well, you haven't heard. The castle was set upon by a giant. And the prince? Who's not with them? Come, you must come with me. You'll be safe in our company. moment holds for me. I shall never forget you. How brave you are to be alone in the woods, and how alive you've made me feel. What was that? That's 
what words are for, for those moments in the woods. back by now. She wouldn't get lost. I'm sure she'll return. No, I must go in search of her. Oh, look, I'll do. No, you stay here with the baby. I will count a hundred paces and I shall return soon. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look who I found. You don't want to give me to the giant. It's not our fault the giant wants you. You're burning me. <laughs> Where did you find that?
not exactly true. We could always give her the boy. No, no, of course a real mouse is a flame. Somebody to blame. Fine, that's the thing you enjoy, placing the blame. If that's the aim, give me the blame. Just give me the boy! took some of the beads for myself. How was I to know? How are we ever to know? And when she died, I back from my guilt. And aren't you doing the same thing? No. Aren't you running away? No more questions, please. No more tests. Comes the day you say, what for? Please. No more. to go. 
Giants waging war. Can't we just pursue our lives with our children and our wives till that happy day arrives? How do you ignore all the witches, all the curses? All the wolves, all the lies, the false hopes, the goodbyes, the reverses. All the wondering what even worse is still in store. All the children, all the giants, no. formulate a plan to defeat the giant. What? We'll have to think. If there were just some way we could surprise her. She's too tall to surprise. and smear the ground there with pitch. Her shoes will stick and she won't be able to move. And I'll climb the tree and strike her from behind. I will climb the tree too and take two mighty blows to fell the giant. I'm excited. I'm gonna kill another giant. Come, we have to climb the tree now. You stay here with the baby. This will take no time. Castle, there's a giant on the loose. The giant has been to the castle. No, are you all right? My love, why are you being so cold? Maybe because I'm not your only love. Am I? I love you, I do, but yes, it's true. Why, if you love me, would you have strayed? I thought that if I had you, that I would never wish for more. And part of me is as content and as happy as it's ever been. But there remains a part of me that continually needs more. I have, on occasion, wanted more. But that doesn't mean I went out in search of it. 
If this is how you behave as a prince, what kind of a king will you be? I was raised to be charming, not sincere. <laughs> I didn't ask to be born a king, and I am not perfect. I'm only human. I think you should go. Leave? But I do love you. Consider that I've been lost, a victim of the giant. Is that what you really wish? My father's house was a nightmare. Yours was a dream. Now I need something in between. Please go. I will always love the maiden who ran away. And I, the faraway prince. They're almost finished. You see over there between those two trees? When the giant comes, we are to send her over there. Good. I want to climb the tree, too. Well, I'm glad you're here to help me. What, what's wrong? My granny's gone. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. I think her and my mother would be upset with me. Why? They always told me to make them proud. And here I am about to kill somebody. Not somebody. A giant who's been doing harm. But the giant's a person. Aren't we to show forgiveness? Oh, mother would be so unhappy with these circumstances. Another's terror. 
horrible mistakes. Witches can be right, giants can be good. You decide what's right, you decide what's good. Just remember, just remember, someone is on your Children. Don't say that. Of course you were meant to have children. How can I go about being a father with no one to mother my child? Just calm the child. Yes, calm the child. Look, tell him the story of how it all happened to be father and mother. You'll know what to do. Once upon a time, 
from a far off kingdom. As a young maiden, sad.
from the entire cast. We have raised money, and through our friend, the narrator, we will be sending you to the Broadway show of your choice. You are <laughs> Gent who ran a muck in Kent. Lately he's been overheard in Mayfair. You better stay away from him. He'll rip your lungs out, Jim. I'd like to meet his tailor.
Hi, what's your name? My name is Elfie Janicek. What do you do for this play? I am the director and the student advisor for Falcon Productions. What did you do to prepare for this play? Well, we just, after last year when we completed Bye Bye Birdie, we gathered together as a group and we wanted to pick a production that would provide an opportunity for many students to have a chance to display their talent. And so we, we looked at a lot of different musicals and we decided that this one had the potential to provide lots of people an opportunity to um, just enjoy the opportunity of doing a musical and being out on stage and, and um, just creating something from a piece of paper to bring it alive and, and entertain an audience. What went into the preparation for this play? Well, the students, um, the students raised the money for the club. We had to look at our budget and we had to decide what we could afford to do and what we couldn't afford to do. The students had to pay up front to the company $2,000 to rent all the materials and to pay for the royalty fees for the performance. Then we want to do staging. As you'll see tonight on um, the set, they had to decide what they wanted to do. And you always decide whether you want to have certain kinds of special effects, um, what kind of costuming you want to have, um, and those things have to be considered. For example, Little Red Riding Hood's house is made with a product called Scrim. And when you shine it from the front, it's opaque. When you shine it from behind, it's transparent. And so you can like see through the house. We thought it would be really cool to um, try and do that and do that kind of a special effect. But so it's a challenge for them and they did a great job. I agree, thank you. Hi, your name is? I'm Chadine Zach. What part of the play are you in? I'm the witch. Is it fun? It's a very good role, yes. <laughs> what did you do to prepare for it? Um, well, I had to kind of figure out how to get into character, and the witch, she's sort of, Mr. Frask really put it best, she's sort of schizophrenic, like she, she's borderline schizo. She goes from like scary and mean to really calm and sweet, and that was kind of interesting, trying to figure out how to play that up, and of course learning to walk in these hideous shoes, because they're very hideous, very painful. <laughs> so. Um, what was your favorite part of the play? Um, the whole play is really, really amazing, but I really like the part where I get to drink the potion and yank off, I have this hideous nose and chin and stuff, I get to yank them off and take off all these ugly clothes and turn around and strike a pose, and it's kind of fun. <laughs> What's involved in being the president of the, of the drama club? Um, well, I would say the majority of the time I'm busy rallying the troops, you know, <laughs> just keeping up morale all the time and, and everything that we're doing, you know, not only just shows, but we've got to get stuff done in meetings. Uh, I kind of run the meetings and I'm usually up there giving a lot of morale, charging, you know, little monologues, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, and just making sure everybody's happy with each other and everybody's problems are all worked out and we're keeping a steady balance between the directors and the whole executive side of the club and all the people that are involved in the club. So that's pretty much what's involved. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? Elizabeth Kingsland. What role do you play in this? I play Rapunzel, the crazy person. <laughs> what was hard about preparing for Rapunzel? Um, she's completely and totally insane. <laughs> and so I guess I had to try to get myself into that mindset every single time and that's kind of hard. Plus she screams a lot and so it's hard on my throat. <laughs> what was your favorite part for the play? Um, screaming all the time, it's fun. <laughs> was it really hard preparing for everything? Um, it wasn't personally but I know that the whole cast and everyone struggled a lot because there was you know there was some problems but we all got through it and so it came out. It, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? I'm Nico Reno. What role do you play in this? Um, I'm the student director for Into the Woods. Was it very hard to prepare for this? Um, uh, I won't lie, I mean it's hard, it's, it's, a, it's a hard show to do, Into the Woods is it's pretty difficult. Um, you have some of the mo more difficult music I think we've dealt with, but uh, preparing and everything, even though how hard it may be it's it's always fun and with a show like this I there wasn't a moment where I wasn't having fun no matter how hard it was because this has been great what was your favorite part of this um, just one <laughs> uh, the music in the show is incredible uh, I'd have to say in the second act 
your fault, last midnight, no more. Those are, those are highlights for me in the show as far as songs. How is this production chosen? Uh, basically, the drama club gets together after the spring musical, and we all kind of put our heads together and try to figure out what we all feel like doing in the fall and in the spring again. We all give our ideas, the different shows we think we should do, until someone comes up with an idea that we all agree with, and that's what we did this time, too. So. All right, thank you. I'm here with Alyssa Lake, Alyssa Lake Casey. And what part of the play are you in? I'm actually the cow Milky White. <laughs> Is it fun? Yeah, it's a lot of fun being the cow. What's your favorite part of the play? Um, my favorite part at the moment is when uh, the baker and the baker's wife had a song in the woods and it's like two different tempos and I get to dance in the background. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Was it your idea? Can you show us the dance? Oh, okay. <laughs> How long did it take you for, to learn that one? Um, about two seconds. <laughs> And whose idea was that? That was Miss Genesec's idea, actually. Really? So, do you plan on being in any other plays? I'm not sure yet. All right, thank you. Hi, what's your name? Christina. What role do you play? I play Cinderella. Was it hard preparing for your role? It was very hard. I'm one of the leaves, so I have a lot of songs to sing, and I have some lines to memorize. And the music, my music, was particularly difficult and strenuous, but I think it came out really well. What did you do to prepare for your role? Well, a lot of memorizing, a lot of practicing my music, stuff like that. What's your favorite part of the play? It would definitely have to be um, this one song, No One Is Alone. It's just a beautiful song. It's in the second act, and it's, I think it's really touching. Either that song or Your Fault, another musical number. It's also it's really fast, and it's really fun to do. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Farf. Hi, what's your name? Julian Marillo. What do you play in this? I play the role of Jack in this play. What was the hardest part about preparing for your role? I'd say a lot of the memor memorization of the music, because um, music by Sodom Hines, really intense music, but it's, it's great. What'd you do to prepare for your role? Uh, really, I would be in my bedroom looking into the mirror and singing, <laughs> and singing the songs, working on facial expressions, and just moving around, getting used to it. What was your favorite part of this play? Pardon? What? what was your favorite part of this play? I'd say the ending, because <laughs> one thing, you love the show, but you love the ending. The music in the end is very beautiful and um, gives you a good message. All right, thank you. Thank you. I'm here with Rapunzel's Prince. What's your name? Jessica Collins. What was your favorite part of doing the play? Um, the singing's a lot of fun. I like the song. Have you done any other plays? Um, I was in a couple, both of the plays last year. I was in Bye Bye Birdie and the three skits that were the fall play. What was, the, what was your favorite part of doing this play? Um, I don't know, I guess just before we go out on show night, it's really exciting. It was Adeline rush. pretty stressful up until then, but it was fun last night. All right, thank you. Hi, what's your name? Ashley. What's your role in this play? I play Jack's mother. <laughs> What'd you do to prepare for this role? Um, well, Sondheim is a crazy guy, and his music is crazy hard, so um, I had to look over it a lot, practice the music. I watched the tape a couple of times of Broadway doing it with Bernadette, Bernadette Peters, and um, I just, I don't know, I just kind of went with it. <laughs> What's your favorite part in the play? Well, I die. That's pretty fun. Um, I, I get to beat up on my son a lot, played by Jack, and that's fun, too. Um, 
I, I really like the opener. That's, I, <laughs> that's like my favorite part, I think. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, what's your name? I'm Cindy Crowderfield. What do you play in this? I am the baker's wife. <laughs> What'd you do to prepare for your role? Um, a lot of preparation, studying the past parts that have done the show on Broadway, uh, videotapes, CDs, studying, <laughs> basically. What's your favorite part in the play? Um, it's actually a line that Little Red Riding Hood says to Jack towards the end. She tells him, um, I'll be your mother now, Jack. I'll be your friend. And it's, you'll have to come see the play to get it. It's really funny. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Behold the radiance. The redheads, the redheads, look, it's the redheads. Smile, Christina, come on, smile. Smile, smile, smile. She's Hello. suddenly camera shy. How can this be? Suddenly camera shy? You were camera shy. You. <laughs> well, I don't like close-ups. I don't like, like, <laughs> like close-ups. Please, darling, no close-ups. No close-ups. No close no close no close no close if you're going to get my face, make sure it's the best. Hi, what's your name? I'm Katia. What part do you play in this play? I play Cinderella's wicked stepmother. What's your favorite part about playing the wicked stepmother? Getting to be very, very evil to people. <laughs> and cutting off body parts. <laughs> um, what's your favorite part of the entire play? Uh, in the second act, there's a song called Your Fault that just gives me goose. Goosebumps, I love that play, <laughs> that part. Yeah. <laughs> uh, was it hard preparing for your role? Um, the, the, not really, because I am evil by nature. The, the hardest part, I would say, though, is blending with other voices around you. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? Heather. What do you do in this? Um, I am makeup and hair technician for the entire club. Is it very hard to do all this? Well, only when people don't hold still. <laughs> like this one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when they move around a lot. And I know, you get excited, it's the show. And yeah. It's hard chasing people down and stuff. <laughs> What's your favorite part of the play? Um, I have to agree with Katia, it's your fault. That's my favorite song. It's, um, it's upbeat, and I don't know. I'm just used to blaming everybody. I have three brothers, so I just kind of like that song. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? Adam Moore. What's your role in this play? A mysterious man. I play uh, the baker's father. What was the hardest part about preparing for the play? Uh, the song towards the end because it was like a completely out of my range. It was like a bass range and I'm a tenor. So I had to like change to fix that, to like meet the song. So. What was your favorite part of the play? Uh, I'd say Your Fault. It's such an awesome song. That's like my favorite part. I love watching it. I think they do a great job during that. So. What did you do to prepare for your role? Uh, basically, I just like watched the movie and then changed my voice. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Ever. You want to smile? Hi, what's your name? Sonia Finn. What do you do for this play? Uh, I'm part of the makeup crew. What was the hardest part about doing the makeup? Um, a lot of the characters are older than they look, and uh, the hardest part was probably making them look like they were up in their 50s or 60s. What was your favorite part of this play? Um, I, there were a lot of funny parts. I think the second act, though, was probably my favorite part, and I really liked the end. But I'm not going to give it away, so. <laughs>
What did you do to prepare all the makeup? Um, I went online and I researched the play. I mean, I knew it was about fairy tales and basically how the characters were supposed to look. And then we got some input from Mrs. Janicek and we made the uh, characters come to life. All right, thank you. Thanks. Hi, what's your name? Chris. What part do you play? The wolf. Wolf. What was the hardest part about preparing for this role? It wasn't really a hard part. It was more of the animal instinct that was hard to be. You had to pretend that you were that same animal. What's your favorite part of this play? I like it all. It's kind of like a John Lennon song. It reminds me of um, a lot of good philosophy and stuff. I knew. And um, it's very meaningful, powerful words, music. What did you do to prepare? I did a lot of things. I watched a lot of nature shows to um, get the feeling and the sensation of being a wolf. And um, took a lot of dance moves and stuff, and I had to do a lot of that stuff. And it's basically just go over my word lines and stuff. And All right, thank you. You're welcome. Whoa. Hi, what's your name? Leslie Wainer. What do you do for this play? Um, I did the lighting design and lighting technician for the second act. Was it very hard preparing for this? Um, well, it got kind of frustrating when some of the lights wouldn't work. <laughs> and it was sometimes frustrating working with some of the people. <laughs> but um, it was as hard as other shows. Was it a lot of fun for you? Oh, yeah. It's, it's really entertaining, especially watching everyone come together and sometimes watching them mess up. What's your favorite part of the play? Um, I don't know. I'm going to first the second act. And this one particular song, um, No One Is Alone. That song is so awesome and it really speaks to me. It's so chory, but it speaks to me. <laughs> All right, thank you. Hi, what's your name? Becca Goldstein. What part do you play in this play? I'm the lighting director. Was it very hard getting all the lighting together? Well, I've been doing it for three years, so I've pretty much gotten used to it. But it's a lot of fun. It's not that hard. It takes a lot of work, though. What's your favorite part in the play? Uh, I like the beginning when the, um, the first scene when uh, the baker and Cinderella and uh, Jack are all singing. It's a lot of fun. Do you think it was really hard for the people in the play to get together and put it together? Or was it fairly easy for them just because they're all friends? Well, this is one of the 15 hardest musicals that there are out there, so it was very difficult. The people here are really, they work together really well, so that in, in that respect it was easy, but it's a very difficult musical to put together. All right, thank you. Thank you. Baker, right? Yes. Gotcha. Sure. Hi, what's your name? I'm Christopher Kaufman. What part do you play in this play? I play the baker. Was it hard preparing for your role as the baker? Well, it's kind of interesting. Um, the whole show is based on fairy tales, but the baker and this baker's wife is kind of a new one that was added. So it's, it just kind of ties all the other fairy tales together. So it wasn't really much preparation, just um, really focusing on what a baker would be like. And it's just a fun part. What was the, what's your favorite part of the play? Oh God, it's a toss up between a uh, scene in act two called My Fault, Your Fault, excuse me, uh, which is a very fast paced song and um, we do it very well and I was very impressed with the group. And overall, I just love this music. Um, Stephen Sondheim is my favorite composer and uh, this has definitely been a fun show, overall. That's cool, thank you. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? I'm Gabe Brunswick. <laughs> what role do you play? I'm the narrator of this play. <laughs> <laughs> what was the hardest part about this? Probably the singing. I'm not a singer by any means, and that's something tough that I had to do. What was your 
favorite part of the play? Probably a part that I can't reveal to you because it would ruin it, but it's very funny and it happens about halfway through the second act. And it's very unexpected. What's your favorite part of the play? Probably when I die. I get to throw the fourth wall out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Was it hard preparing for your role? Yeah, I mean, I had to, you know, definitely work, sit down and uh, work a bit on the lines and the singing, but it wasn't extremely difficult. I love this stuff, so it was a labor of love, so to speak. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? I'm Honey Wendy. What's your role? Um, well, obvious, the cape. Um, I'm Little Red Riding Hood. What did you do to prepare for your role? Well, Little Red Riding Hood in this play is kind of psycho, so I didn't really have to prepare that much. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm kind of psycho myself, so that's basically it. What's your favorite part in the play? Oh, probably the second act. Well, I don't know. There's a scene in the first act where I get to pull a knife on Julie, on Jack, and then in the second act, there's Your Fault. It's a song, and then there's um, No One Is Alone. I love the way we do that. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. right she's going out she has a young man waiting she's going out she has a young man waiting wide eyes she'll be streetwise to the Tenderness on the block. Daddy, don't you ask her when she's coming in. And when she's home, don't ask her where she's been. She's going out. She has a young man. It hurts to see her go She has a mind of her own You know She's all grown up She has a young man waiting She's all grown up She has a young man waiting She was wild Switching yard, night time in the switching yard, night time in the switching yard, night time in the switching yard, get it out on my main line. Listen to the rhythm of the train go by, get it out on the main line. Listen to the rhythm of the train. Train was so wild. 